Oliver, the long-awaited SALTS report that Barclays commissioned to have a look into itself effectively came out this morning. Um, was it a statement of the bleeding office or was there anything useful in there, do you think? Uh, largely, it was a, a statement of the bleeding office, so unfortunately. The, the report, it's quite unusual for a company about to commission a big report into its own failings, but this is exactly what it was. And it goes over what went wrong in the, the sort of growth of the bank and the governance failures that led to the LIBOR problems and the PPI mis-selling problems. So it tells us what we knew, and it comes out with 34 recommendations, um, but some of those are already kind of underway anyway at the bank. So not an awful lot that was new, although it does summarise things in a very kind of handy way. So as we've talked about this morning, it's sort of strange that you'd release a big report a couple of months after your own um, internal strategy um, presentation has actually been delivered already. Um, but it did save some reasonably harsh words on pay. But again, I guess we knew that about Bob Diamond's old Barclays anyway, didn't we? Yeah, we knew the pay was high and, and the report talks about 70 top earners and how their pay was out of kilter with uh, with the rest of the industry. So it does highlight pay. The, the other thing it goes into, which is quite important, is that the problem is as much average levels of pay for sort of mediocre performers as it is for the, the star bankers. So it highlights that and comes up with some specific recommendations about how to keep a, a control on pay, which is more than the people at the top of the bank have said at the moment. They, they've made a commitment to reducing pay, but haven't detailed how. This goes a little bit more to saying how they might go about that. And anything on corporate governance? There was something on there about the board, wasn't there? Yeah, lots of recommendations about the board and the, the composition and the conduct, that kind of thing. But I don't think any of this is very different to what might be expected anyway. For instance, it says there ought to be a chief executive succession plan. Well, of course there should, but every company should have that. It says that the board should have some banking experience. Well, of course, as an investor, you would expect the board to have banking experience, a combination of banking and non-banking. So all very sensible, straightforward recommendations, but not necessarily anything vastly different to what you might expect as an investor. And of course, Barclays and most UK banks have a PR problem, don't they? So you could explain this as being an exercise for the politicians in the public of Barclays and the new CEO saying, look, we're taking a good long look at ourselves. Um, lots of recommendations here. What more can we be doing? Yeah, though there is certainly an element of that, and it does fit in very much with what Anthony Jenkins, the relatively new chief executive, has been saying since he was appointed last year. So it fits in very much with the narrative, but it was a fairly pricey way to go about it. Well, £17 million to produce, but given the losses that Barclays and other banks have lost over the last five years, if it stops that again for the next 20, then it's money well spent. Thank you very much for that, Oliver.